some would take a bedroom the carpeting and maybe cut it up and strip some tie it up and throw it out there. Yeah. You're saying that was something you would take. Absolutely. Now, again, when the city employees are doing it, I mean, I know this because I'm a plumbing contractor, if you do a water heater out there, then they notify the city going, hey, there's a water heater that was put in here. It wasn't a permit bowl. So, learned, learned a lesson a long time ago on that. So, you know, we see, if we see construction debris out there, that should be somehow relate to the city that something's going on there. Well, the, the hope would be that one of our ordinance team members would see that also sitting out there because or, they're in one of those areas. Or they or they could notify the ordinance. Sure, absolutely. Because no. you guys do take appliances as, as long as they don't contain Freon, correct? That's correct. I mean, it's I've had, we've had people get <coughs> gym equipment out, we take it away. Mattresses, couches, you know, chairs, what I'm saying is there's no limit on that kind of stuff unless somebody is really abusing it, you know, and using it as part of their business. We haven't, we haven't had this type of service in a while. Mm -hmm. And when we did, we used to be able to throw just about anything out. And it was not really an issue because it was all taken. Yeah. And that's so, what I'm saying. So once it gets caught up, I think it'll be fine. Yes. No, I agree. And trust me, we, we service the city of Detroit on the east side. And... They had that ball collection in years or months, so we've seen, we've been, you know, we've, in 2014, we've seen it all. <coughs> we had boats put on the curb, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding, boats, so. I have a question for you. You say you'll start out with all new equipment. Does that include the trucks? Yes. Will you be able to get new trucks in time? We have them already. Oh, okay. We have a, kind of a surplus because of so many cities that, you know, we, Thankfully, are getting. Uh, we do have the city of Southfield that's uh, starting shortly. Uh, Garden City is also starting, and that was one of the things that I had offered that you know that we would actually like to start even sooner. Uh, that, so if we start doing the services ahead of ahead of July one, that really helps us out. Plus, it helps the city out. What is a new garbage truck like? Basically, there's somewhere between you know really 180,000 and 280,000. It's kind of fluctuation depending on if it's an automated one, you know, the automatic arm. A lot of times those are around, you know, 230 to 260. How many uh, dedicated trucks will you have to the utility? Well, I, I know on the trash route, I think. Uh, I think your total, your total will be around six, I believe. Yeah, I think we have eight right now. We're going to come in initially with eight and then, you know, just kind of your bag from there, but we may even have more than that. I mean, we're really going to come in heavy with, uh, with it. Again, we always come in with about 20-25% more than it's needed. We always have people say, well, the best service we've ever had is the first few weeks. Not that it gets worse, but we always want that, we want that initial, you know, it's at a point where people are chasing, well, they're chasing us down the street because we're there, you know, you'll get there kind of early because you can't put too many trucks in there because if you have too many, then you know, they're, they're kind of used to, well, you guys usually are around 11, and we fly yeah. our house at 9. So so we'll, we'll make a few runs through the community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing with the new, with the new trucks, you, can, you don't hear them as easily either. Some of the new ones are kind of, yeah, so I've had that complaint. <laughs> I don't hear the truck anymore. Well, I thought that was a good thing. <laughs> a question about recycling. Glenn, um, you know, Midwestern is working with Great Lakes Recycling. Would you be working with that same company? Like, would, you know, we take our recycling there, and my question is, if we're not going to use that, is that going to be another time we're going to have to look at? It's RE Community, I believe, is that? Yeah, what happened was Great Lakes Recycling uh, was bought out by RE Community. Okay. But it's the same place we deal with. We okay. have a long relationship with them. We bring them, obviously, a large amount of recyclables. Uh, so yeah, we would be dealing with them. I think there's a, with your agreement, I'm not sure if there's a out clause or not, but our intention was to take that part over. Yeah, I think Gus and Rick worked on that. Okay. okay. Well, a question on that. At one point, when we recycling was on, we was receiving a check back. Mm -hmm. Is that still going to happen? Once we recycle? Yes. 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 Although it's unfortunately going the wrong way. Yeah, right it is now. going the wrong yeah. way. All that. Plus, next week could be, could be different. Right. So you're saying we're doing 
double the amount of recycling pickups, I guess it would maybe be the same amount. But if we're writing checks now, you're saying that you think we're going to be getting checks? No, I'm saying that we're right. We, well, I think we just wrote a check, though. It, recycling is a commodity, and at right. one point in time, we, we were getting a small stipend for recycling, and so it's it shifted it, where scrap values have gone down, and so we're now, it's still it's still cheaper to pay to recycle than pay the tipping fees. Well, I'm but, all for but recycling, yeah, we're, but we're now that we're recycling, recycling more, are we going to be paying more? No, so no, it's still be roughly the same, yeah, the same amount of the the, the thought is that you'll need less cans out there, because like right now I have two cans, uh, recycling cans, because it's every other week. Right. So if you're picking up weekly, I'm guessing I, I'll be able to give a can back and go down to one can. <coughs> yeah, we don't have any communities that we service on a every other week basis. We always service them weekly. It just create, you know, it cuts back on the uh, confusion and recycling. Yeah, that's, a lot of actually, I stand corrected. Detroit still has every other week for recycling. So you guys are a little cheaper. They're a little cheaper on the tipping fee. Um, you know, per pound or per ton or whatever. But if we're going to be doing this bulk pickup weekly, do we see a, 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 a spike in that? I mean, you know, there, there's some unknowns here that are a little, you know, I mean, I don't know if, if anybody's done that analysis. Well, or I think the logical explanation is initially you will. I mean, I think over time, you know, you, you know unfortunately, we're, we're dealing with it sometimes, whether we want to or not, because people are dumping them where they shouldn't dump them. So I think initially, the next, you know, for, as we all talked about, the first couple of weeks, you're going to see a surge, but then you're just going to average out into just normal stuff, their one-off kind of thing. I don't think you'll see a lot of it, but it will exist. Well, then we got to look at the other side of that. We have less people coming to the compost and paying the dump once they run out of there. So we're going to lose potential revenue down there. Well, we're going to look at that whole compost model separate. To this, but there has to be changes to the compost model altogether. I like to be involved in that conversation. Any other questions for Chuck or his team? Thank you guys. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Is that the demolition? Um, so, Madam Chair, um, Jamie, do you want to talk about Berkshire development? Do you have the item? Uh, one, one thing to point out, um, you guys have all probably been aware and, and seen on the news how much the city of Detroit is currently paying for demolition. Yeah. These rates are extremely lower than that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we get some very favorable rates um, and uh, Timing wise, Jamie, assuming that this is approved tomorrow? Um, I still have two jobs and we had two houses and Okay. All right. Um, I worked with Berkshire before they come in and they get their work done and I don't have any complaints. Yeah, they were there a little there. The ones that did like the French Fest and Glenis? They did, yes. They did Glenis, John Gibbons, and John Gibbons. Yeah, 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 John <laughs> Number six is the second reading to the rezoning of that property piece of the old two red cafe. Oh, yeah. Question on that? That's the house, right? I just have a question the about ping house. Uh, yeah, the ping house. I call it. <laughs> the, uh, the residents to the east of this rezoning, were they notified of the zoning change? Uh, yeah. no? yeah. Yes, they were. And they were at the meeting. Okay. Also, and we added two special conditions. Whether or not the zoning goes or not, they're going to provide, uh, we prefer a landscape firm buffer. to buffer the yeah. residents. And then to the north, uh, also the owner of A&W, he was there. Yeah. And he asked that the screening and buffering there doesn't block his view of his business. Right. So we added two more conditions. 
Shrubbery or a tree lining or how? Landscape berm. Landscape berm. Okay. 